here we can have a look to see how we can go from the stock standard layout here with the products and the images to the an animated version where the products will actually rotate uh, after a certain time as you can see and what will also happen is that they will highlight here in the gallery section so you'll see the red is highlighted i can also next i can also previous and here i have a plugin that looks at um, sizes and as i select those you'll see that the images that have been allocated to a variation then also display as they should and while the variation is selected the animation the slider is paused and i can always just head over and continue um, manually so that's pretty much how that works and we're just going to have a look then how you can just enhance this product image area then of the website so it's actually uh, a lot simpler than you think there's no plugin required what we do now is i'm just going to um, close this tab here we have the standard tab i'm going to refresh and you'll see that we have the standard tab applied here head over here to the um, filter that we're using and we're going to use this woocommerce single product carousel options filter and in this filter we have access to some of the settings in how the gallery is displayed so we have right to left animation smooth height direction navigation control nav etc so we have these controls available to us and what i've set is um, in mine at the bottom here i've just changed some of those settings so to do that we create a function and we bring in the variable with its arrays called options and basically then what we do is we can take any one of these items here head over options and then that array name the value name equals to and set it to true in this case the animation speed i set to 200 which is a lot faster and then the options allow one slide I've set to true. So in order to get the direction navigation, then obviously the direction nav is important. And I'm going to show you what this looks like then. Uh, you'll see at the moment we don't have anything displayed. And I'm going to scroll down here and activate. And immediately now you're going to see that the navigation kicks in and the slider kicks in. So everything now kicks in based on those settings. In order to get it to look like that, you just need to understand what it looks like before you edit some of the CSS. And it's not complicated CSS editing. And if I go down and just remove the CSS styles that I have, you will see how the um, content will initially show. So when you load it for the first time, what you'll notice now is that your previous and next buttons will just be listed here at the bottom and everything else will work but we need to move those up now um, to move them up is relatively easy and i'll just show you here so what we'll generally do um, is select that um, item there and you probably want to set it to an absolute position so we'll hit the plus for a new style and we'll go display or we'll go position absolute And the moment you do that, um, and I go top, I'll go with the top first so we can see where the top is. So top 0%, you scroll up, you'll see that it fits here at the top of the image. So that's great. But if I set the bottom to 0%, you'll see that that is actually positioned then at the bottom of all these images. Now, the problem with that is that, you know, if you have three rows, two rows, or one row, it's going to be a bit of an issue. Um, also you'll notice that it's an ordered list so it's very quick to change um, we'll simply um, the first thing we'll do is get rid of the list so list style we'll say none and then we have the list style then what we want to do is get rid of any padding zero and we want to get rid of any margins zero and then what we want to do is separate them one to the left one to the right so we'll go display um flex i could immediately um, put them on a row and then what we're going to do is set the width to 100 percent 
Right, so now we have everything in place. Then we'll head over to our flex settings here and we'll just set them to space between. And there we have our previous and our next setup. Now what we can do is determine where to position them. Um, so now instead of, um, we will do a top, but instead of a percentage now, what we're going to do is set it to a value. So uh, let's go 400 pixels. And that'll just ensure that the item is in the correct position on every single page. Then what I'm going to do is just change the background of that. So maybe what I want to do is enter a background and we'll make it fairly dark, right? Now I want to add some padding, but I don't want to add padding to the, the flex nav bar. I actually want to add it to the individual items so that the click area is bigger. So to do that, we'll just head down then to the left and right and we'll click the add button. And now what we can do is add the padding uh, to the left, uh, to the actual um, clickable area. So let's make that um, 15 pixels. And what I'm also, uh, let's just try that again. And what I'm also going to do is set the width uh, to 50%. So now that means that when I, um, uh, the ally class is where I'll set the width to 50%. But you get the idea. So now that I've um, increased the area and the size, and you need to do it for the left and the right. So what I've gone ahead and done already is created the style um, that I've been using. And uh, the only thing that I really need to um, show you is, and I'm just going to remove the styles here. Um, well, that wouldn't work. Okay, so I'm going to remove the styles so that they inherit my default styles. And then I will refresh and just um, show you what I've done. So we're going to move that out the way. Um, I'm going to publish that and then I'm just going to refresh. And right, so I've refreshed, head over to the styles, and those are the styles that I use. So um, the important thing to note here um, is that um, the position of the UR Flex nav which is the horizontal bar here, is I've set that here to a standard of 472. And because the t-shirt page has, has a three column layout, what I've done is I've set the t-shirt page to then have a top of 392 so that it'll work on the t-shirt page and it also works on a standard page. Um, and the rest is pretty much as we had a look at earlier. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll include the styling that I used in the comment below the video. So you don't have to worry about getting the styling from this window. Um, yeah, and then once we're done, just publish and close that off. And then I'll show you how, because I have the name of the category in the um, body class, I'm able now to go and have a look. Say, for example, um, I did add it to hoodies. And in hoodies with pocket, you'll see that I've added another image there. And you'll see that the position is at the correct height. And that's because I've included the um, category into the body class. And I've included that in another video. Um, and I'll put a link to that video as well in the description. So that's pretty much then how you can change the height for different sizes. But yeah, it works really well. Um, yeah, and then by adjusting any of these items here, you can then also uh, change the settings on that slideshow from WooCommerce. So yeah, I hope you find that, found that useful and thank you for watching.